What's going on everyone and welcome back to another episode of Dave and Confused, episode 15. I was driving the other day and I saw something pretty sad. Uh, it's the holiday season. I'm driving down the street on the west side of Fresno and I see this old woman, she's probably like three and a half feet tall, weathered face, old, very weak and fragile. She's walking down the street barefoot on the dirt road with about five bags of holiday gifts and shopping that she did on each hand. And she's just being fucking way down this whole time, can barely take a step. And at first I wanted to feel bad, but then I remembered she kind of got free shipping if she chose Amazon Prime in as little as two days or less. Amazon Prime for as low as $9.99 a month, you can get free shipping. All of your holiday shopping, all of your groceries, Anything you want, Amazon Prime, save yourself a trip. I don't feel bad for that woman. Work smarter, not harder. This episode is sponsored by Amazon Prime. Welcome back everyone to the holiday special David Confused episode. First one of its kind. It is the holiday special. It is a couple days after Christmas. Uh, probably should have done this closer to Christmas, but whatever your holiday is, have a good one. Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, etc. I had a pretty, I guess, normal Christmas for the circumstances. We had to Zoom Christmas with our extended family. It's my immediate family with my brothers. It's pretty, uh, Pretty low key. Uh, my mom made her usual cookies and baked goods, but she did add something new this year, uh, which is kind of surprising. It's like in and out adding a new item. She came out with something called Kahlua Crack Cake, and it was pretty good. Uh, she probably could add a little bit more crack. No, that's a bad joke. That was a running joke. I kept saying it was just it got worse every time. Um, uh, it was funny because if you guys know me, you probably know my brother, my older brother, Daniel, aka Danny Jamo. Growing up, uh, we did have a lot of animals and Dewey and I usually took care of them. My little brother, Dan did like animals, but he just wasn't, uh, super into it like us. So that's kind of a running joke. We like to make fun of him for it. And sure enough. He just got a new puppy and it looks like a little mini teddy bear. It is funny to watch him hold it because it reminds you of the Grinch. His freaking heart grew like 20 times the size. It's a nice little Christmas, real low key, trying to not be a super spreader, trying to follow all the guidelines. We left right at an hour, 59 minutes. Uh, cause I think the cutoff was two hours, so saved ourselves on that one. But it was a weird one. We just got hit with another shutdown in Fresno, in Clovis. This, one, this one's probably the most confusing, cause at this point people are like, we don't give a fuck, we're staying open anyway. Then you have people that are like, we're for sure closed. And you have like the speakeasy people that are like, we're gonna have people secretly through the back door or just on our patio. Who fucking knows at this point? Let's get these fucking vaccines out and pumping and get this herd immunity so we can all back to fucking, go back to fucking normal. I did see something that reminded me uh, back in the day, back in elementary school, they used to have these things that are uh, at our school that were for sale by the administration called like birthday grams, which I'm realizing 
is the biggest fucking hustle uh, this in the last 100 years that I've seen. Birthday gram for like 20 bucks, you just buy like a bag of candy for someone and you can make it anonymous. Basically, the administration of this elementary school is just preying on the horniness of a bunch of preteens trying to like buy birthday grants for each other and try to like flirt because that was the only way you could do it back then. It was such a rip off, 20 bucks for a birthday gram. And it wasn't just birthdays. They had Valentine's Day grams, they had Halloween grams. You gotta respect the hustle, taking these kids' lunch money right out of their pocket. But come on, 20 bucks? That's fucking expensive for like weed. Imagine if you got a birthday gram at this point and you just get a little like joint with some candy, like a little Valentine's. Business idea. But that just got me thinking again of just all the opportunities that teachers had to just make a quick buck on students. My eighth grade year, Rancho's Middle School, shut out Mustangs. If anyone else went to Rancho's Middle School that's watching this, you know Mr. Swan in eighth grade. He was my homeroom teacher. And when it was nice outside, he used to have pizza party Fridays where he would basically get every single kid in the school, which is maybe like 300, to give him five bucks. And everyone would just pitch into this pizza fund. And Mr. Swan, the ultimate hustler that he is, had like a previous student that owned like a pizza chain that I had actually never heard of before, which is kind of weird. And he basically cut a deal with this kid to get like 200 pizzas and basically it was just all you can eat. He would just unload the pizzas in his room during lunch and all the kids would just run in, just grab a bunch, grab like a whole box and run out. And he probably pocketed like at least three or 400 bucks. Um, but once again, respect the hustle. Don't be surprised if I have a couple little Caesar stands outside the local freaking high school just to make a quick buck. It's COVID, you gotta do what you gotta do. You guys know that I am currently in a feud with Cable and Comcast. Once football season's over, I might just fucking cancel it if it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg. I was skimming through Sports Center the other day, which is a rarity for me. And I did see that they're doing a Zoom call with Adam Silver, the commissioner for the NBA. And these Zoom calls are so strange to begin with because you have people that are usually in front of these multi-million dollar cameras, big press conferences, lights, and the Zoom calls have really, uh, I think, humanized a lot of these people, like Jimmy Fallon, and these people with the talk shows, it makes them kind of lackluster. The main thing with those is that it kind of humanizes people like Jimmy Fallon. It did the exact opposite with Adam Silver. The guy is the most alien-like, alien humanoid hybrid I've ever seen. And seeing him in a Zoom call was like, just solidif just solidified my theory. I just had to get that off my chest. He's probably jealous that he's not in a freaking homemade studio like me. By the way, this episode might look a little different. We have a brand new camera in the mix. We added a new big gun to our freaking arsenal. Super HD from here on out. And keep an eye out because Dewey just helped me uh, produce a an iced coffee review. So keep an eye out for that this week. Uh, we're gonna end the year right. But we're back on the blind taste test reviews. We're gonna start nailing those probably once a week. Like, subscribe, comment if you haven't already. If you want to see me review something, write it in the comments preferably in English. And so I have a, a vendetta against cable, against Xfinity, and I also have one against Freshly now because as you guys have known from my previous pods, they're just not good at their job and they need to pay for it. It's been two consecutive weeks that they're supposed to 
ship their food here at my doorstep and it did not even show up. So I had to feed my addiction again and I called the Freshly Hotline and I just said like, hey, you know, what's the deal here? What's going on? This is two weeks where my kids are starving just because you won't send your goddamn food like you promised. I need some compensation. And with situations like this, usually it, it sounds like they outsource their calls from like some third world country or some call center. And sometimes they just talk like robots. So I'll just naturally start talking like a robot back to them. But this, this last one kind of threw me a curveball. They tried a, a technique I'm not used to. Uh, she kind of was talking like a robot and then she slowly started to talk like this and just started talking lighter and lighter. So I started talking lighter too. And at that point we're basically just whispering on the phone and she like was whispering like, when did you order this? Did you need to do that? And then she kind of just stopped and I kind of just like, didn't know if it was like bad reception or something. So I just kind of waited it. That chick tried to filibuster me for 15 minutes and I just waited. And then eventually she just went back on the phone. Like nothing even happened. And like, okay, so we need to do this. And did you receive the order? And I was just like, wow, really using some exotic techniques. It's not going to work on me. I want my fucking $30 compensation. And they gave it to me. So Freshly, you're on your fucking last strike. One more fuck up, you might be cut from the squad. But if you see this and you want to sponsor, let me know. I'll gladly feature you as the number one sponsor. Now let's get to everyone's favorite segment, Tales from the Road. We got a packed Tales from the Road this week. It starts off with a little bit of holiday cheer. Uh, I worked two days before Christmas and an older woman surprised me with some of the little, like a tin of cookies with like candy canes and Jolly Ranchers and candy and shit like taped on the outside. And at first it's like, okay, like COVID and all this, like. I don't really want to take things from other people, but she gave it to me and it's like, oh, okay, like this is a very nice gesture, but hey lady, I don't want cookies. I want money. Just freaking tip me. No, I'm just kidding. It wasn't like the biscotti, it was like the little wafers where you stir into the hot chocolate and they disintegrate. Appreciate the gesture, but Next time, put the money in the bag. Saw a couple of rare sightings uh, this go around. Just stuff you don't really see every day. I saw a woman construction worker on the side of 99. Hard hat and everything, I had to double check, or double take, because uh, the long hair, I thought it might have just been a bullet on a guy. But there's a woman out there with a freaking jackhammer. Full respect, mad respect, definitely probably could beat me an arm wrestling match. You just don't see that a lot. The other one I saw, um, not in the best neighborhood, I saw a dwarf with some head tattoos. So that was pretty, it's pretty encouraging that times are, you know, so I guess we're in the modern world. You don't discriminate against small people if they want to join a gang. Good to see that. The last one, something I got to highlight. I mentioned before how Fresno is probably the most anti-pedestrian city in California, if not the world. If you're a pedestrian in Fresno for whatever reason, just about anywhere, uh, you're looked down upon by someone in a car like Fresno just set you up for failure if you're a pedestrian. 
not a lot of sidewalks. If they are, they're right by streets like Herndon that have like 60 mile per hour speed limits. They have crosswalks leading you right into highway on-ramps with like no, not even a yield sign. So you're basically playing Frogger every time. Like it's not a good situation. It leads to a lot of angst and tension between bikers and people walking and people driving. Like Fresno is a driving town. People do a lot of California stops where they don't stop all the way and just haul ass through the stop the stop sign. At least for people getting their shins cut off. But not this woman that I saw. I saw a woman walking downtown and she was crossing not even an on-ramp, but like just a regular street. And she's wearing the fluorescent gear. She has a walking stick and she's crossing it. She's like waving the stick and just fucking yelling at the top of her lungs. So people don't hit her. And it's like, that lady has lived a real life. People are too comfortable now. They're just crossing, playing Pokemon Go, not giving a fuck. Hey, people die every day. Freaking head on a swivel. You love to see that from someone who doesn't take things for granted. Love to see that. Wish more people would walk around like that woman. But other than that, it has been a great holiday. Uh, 2021 looks to be a big year. Hopefully we get these live shows popping soon. We'll see. We'll see when things open up, what things look like. Uh, until then, expect a lot of reviews, expect more content with the new camera. I think I have a guest coming on later this week, so be excited for that. And we're just going to do the damn thing. Some merch is on the horizon. Just sticking to the script, putting that work in, a lot of things coming for 2021. So heat check on that. And as usual, like, subscribe, comment. This time I'll try to remember to put my number so you guys can leave some voicemails for the hotline. But until then, be safe y'all.